In this video, I'm going to be talking about my Honda SS180 V-Twin that I made in 2005. I sold it to a friend in about 2012. So anyway, it's come back from a bit of a service, a bit of a tune-up, check, check the carburetors, check the timing, and take it for a ride, which is really cool, because I haven't ridden it for 10 years. The engine on my SS180 is based on the old 6-volt C90 engine, which normally have a 3-speed with an automatic clutch. I was able to convert the automatic clutch into manual operation and add an operating lever on the outside of the casing. I upgraded the gearbox from a 3-speed to a 4-speed using parts from the Honda S90. When I made the seat, I used a 6-inch headlight bowl off an old British bike. I cut it in half and welded it to the base. When I added the rear cylinder to the engine, I couldn't make it 90 degrees because the frame wouldn't be strong enough, so I had to lean it forward slightly and add a bar at the front for additional support. With the rear cylinder leaning forward more, there was less room for the carburetors to point backwards, so I pointed the front one forwards. The back carburetor is fitted through the frame like on my SS100s. I upgraded the rear sprocket and chain to a 530 for the additional torque and power of the SS180. The exhaust system is straight through and it sounds amazing. Before I take it out for a test ride, I need to do a little bit of maintenance. So I'm going to take off the two points covers and the generator cover and check the ignition timing. Each of the cylinders has its own set of points held in a little casing. The cover's held on with two screws. With the covers removed, here's the front set of points and the rear set of points. Next, I have to remove the generator cover to reveal the timing marks for each cylinder. To set the timing, I need the following tools. My meter, a screwdriver, a spanner, and some feeler gauges. With the cover removed, I use the spanner to turn the crankshaft to open the front set of points to the maximum gap. Then using my feeler gauges, I check the fit and it is really loose. So the front set of points gonna need adjusting, but I'll just check the back set first. So I rotate the crankshaft to open up the back set of points and check with the feeler gauges and they fit perfect. So the back cylinder is spot on, but we need to adjust the front cylinder. To adjust the points gap, you first loosen the two securing screws. Then with a flat blade screwdriver, you just lever the gap either tight or loose until the feeler gauge just slips in and out with a slight bind. When you're happy with the fit, do up the two screws. Then I always just double check to make sure it hasn't moved. With the point gap set on both cylinders, it's now time to set the ignition timing. I use my old voltmeter for this task. You clip one wire to earth and one wire to the live side of the points. And when the points open, the needle will move. It's easy to clip the wire straight onto the spring of the points. That way it gets a good connection to the power feed. Then with the ignition on, I carefully rotate the crankshaft, watching the meter and the timing marks and when the F mark lines up with the pointer, the meter should move. But in this case, it goes right past the F and it's almost at the top, so the timing is retired. I position the crankshaft in the correct place by winding it back past where it should be and then coming back up to where it needs to be. This takes out any backlash in the timing chain. Then I stop at the F exactly. With the crankshaft set at the firing position, the next thing to do is loosen the two screws securing the points plate to the engine and adjust the points plate with a screwdriver until the needle just moves. Then retighten the two screws securing the points plate in position. Go back to the crankshaft, rotate it back past the firing mark and back up to the firing mark 
watching the gauge and as you approach the firing mark the needle moves and the timing is set perfectly. With the front cylinder timing set I repeat the process on the rear cylinder turning the engine to the correct place on the flywheel using the timing marks that I scribed when I built the engine. As I approach the fire mark the light goes straight out indicating that the rear cylinder timing is actually spot on and needs no further adjustment. With the ignition timing set, I gave it a little kick over and it fired up straight away and felt really responsive. While the covers are off the engine, I decided to give them a bit of a buff up to make them really shiny before they go back on. So I'll go over to my shed to use my old buffer. It does a great job on aluminium parts. I really like my buffing machine. It came out of a school and it's from the 60s. And it works so nice. It's got an old fashioned belt that you can adjust in length when it wears. With the covers all polished, I return to the garden and fit them back on the bike. With the engine all back together, I go and get my gear and take it for a ride. It's been about 10 years since I've ridden this bike and I'm really looking forward to it. you enjoyed this little video on my Honda SS180. I had great fun riding it around the roads. It's a real blast to ride, although it is a bit loud. But Graham, who owns it, likes it as a pit bike for his racing cars, so it has to be loud so it can be heard. Anyway, see you next time.